The ground beneath Puerto Rico is ticking like a bomb. Eight miles down, deeper than Mount Everest is tall, a geological monster is sleeping. And when it wakes, it won't just destroy the Caribbean. It will send walls of water racing across the Atlantic at jet speed toward 100 million Americans. Scientists are calling it the Puerto Rico Trench, and they're terrified of what it's capable of. Right now, emergency planners across the eastern seaboard are quietly revising their worst-case scenarios. The Puerto Rico Trench, a massive underwater canyon, stretching 675 miles along the ocean floor, sits just 75 miles north of Puerto Rico's coast. This isn't just any fault line. It's the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean, plunging 27,162 feet below the surface, so deep that if you dropped Mount Everest into it, the peak would still be a mile underwater. What makes this terrifying is what geologists have just discovered. The Caribbean plate is grinding beneath the North American plate at nearly an inch per year, building pressure that has already killed nearly 3,500 people in the last 500 years. But that's just the beginning. No AA scientists have been forced to completely revise their maximum earthquake estimates for this region. Originally, they thought a magnitude 8.0 was the worst possible. Now, emergency management is preparing for magnitude 9.0 earthquakes, the same scale that devastated Japan in 2011. The numbers are staggering. A major rupture here wouldn't just affect the Caribbean. Tsunami waves would race across the Atlantic at 500 miles per hour, reaching Florida's coast in just two hours. The Carolinas would have less than three hours. New York, four hours at most. That's not enough time to evacuate millions of people from hundreds of miles of coastline. This isn't a distant threat. It's a loaded weapon pointed at the heart of America's most populated region. But what's happening beneath the surface is even more alarming. 8,000 feet below the Caribbean Sea, the Earth is slowly tearing itself apart. The Puerto Rico Trench marks where two massive tectonic plates collide in a slow-motion catastrophe that's been building for millennia. The North American Plate, carrying the weight of an entire continent, is being forced beneath the Caribbean Plate, creating a subduction zone that scientists now realize is far more dangerous than anyone imagined. The measurements are chilling. The trench itself spans 560 miles in length and 60 miles in width, a submarine chasm so vast it could swallow entire mountain ranges. As the plates grind together, they're building pressure equivalent to thousands of nuclear bombs. Every year, the plates move 20 millimeters, nearly an inch, but they don't slide smoothly. They stick, lock, and build tension until something has to give. When it does give, the seafloor can rupture across hundreds of miles in minutes. The sudden vertical displacement of the ocean floor acts like a massive underwater piston, displacing billions of tons of water and creating waves that radiate outward at speeds that defy comprehension. In the deep ocean, these waves travel at 600 to 800 kilometers per hour, faster than commercial aircraft. Recent geological surveys have revealed something even more disturbing. The underwater slopes along the trench are steep and unstable, loaded with sediment that could trigger massive submarine landslides. These landslides don't need earthquakes to happen. They can collapse on their own, displacing even more water than earthquake-generated tsunamis. Scientists are finding evidence that the seafloor here has collapsed repeatedly throughout history, each time sending devastating waves across the Atlantic Basin. The physics are merciless. A magnitude 8.5 earthquake rupturing just 400 kilometers, roughly 250 miles, of the trench could displace the seafloor vertically by 15 to 20 meters. That's 50 to 65 feet of ocean bottom suddenly heaving upward, pushing a wall of water toward every coastline in the Atlantic. But numbers don't capture what this means for the people living in the shadow of this threat. Over 100 million Americans live along coastlines that could be hit by waves from the Puerto Rico Trench. In Puerto Rico alone, hundreds of thousands of people wake up every morning within walking distance of beaches that could be swept by 30-foot tsunami waves with less than 20 minutes warning. That's barely enough time to feel the earthquake, realize what's happening, and run for higher ground. The human geography is terrifying. Miami's million residents, Virginia Beach's dense coastal communities, 
the sprawling waterfronts of New York and New Jersey, where millions live in low-lying areas that would flood catastrophically. Charleston, Savannah, the Outer Banks, all of these communities have built their economies and their lives around proximity to the ocean. Now that proximity has become a death trap. Think about the children in beachfront schools along the Carolina coast, the elderly in Florida retirement communities just blocks from the shore, the tourists crowding boardwalks from Atlantic City to Myrtle Beach. When the trench ruptures, they'll have hours, not days, to reach safety. Traffic will jam, roads will flood, panic will spread faster than official warnings. The 1918 tsunami killed 116 people with a relatively small magnitude 7.2 earthquake. That was over a century ago, when Puerto Rico's coast was sparsely populated. Today, the same areas are packed with resorts, homes, and businesses. A magnitude 8.5 earthquake, now considered possible by NOAA, would generate waves 10 times larger, hitting populations 100 times denser. Survivors from 1918 left us with haunting testimony. The sea came like a wall. There was no time to run. Another witness reported, the water came so fast, we lost everything in minutes. These weren't massive waves by tsunami standards, just 10 to 15 feet in most places, but they moved with the force of freight trains, sweeping away everything in their path. And for those hoping this will simply remain a distant threat, the experts have bad news. The scientists who monitor the Puerto Rico trench are choosing their words carefully, but the alarm in their voices is unmistakable. Cristoban Hillebrandt Andrade from NOAA's Caribbean Tsunami Warning Program puts it bluntly. The vulnerability is just huge because so much of our population and infrastructure is located right along the coast. Her assessment of the evolving risk is chilling. Before 2004, we thought an earthquake of about 8.0 was about right for the largest we might see in the Caribbean. But now some think that several faults in the region could be capable of producing earthquakes of 8.6, and the catastrophic planning by our emergency management community is considering 8.5 and 9.0 earthquakes. Dr. Uri Ten Brink from the U.S. Geological Survey doesn't mince words. The Puerto Rico Trench is a sleeping giant. A major earthquake here could send waves across the Atlantic. His research has revealed that the trench system is more complex and dangerous than previously understood. When USGS scientist Bruce Jaffe analyzed prehistoric tsunami deposits, his findings were sobering. It could be a large length of fault that ruptured, 400 kilometers roughly. When Puerto Rico deposits are included, the earthquake would have to be quite a bit larger than earlier modeled events. Even emergency planners are sounding the alarm. Public education is key, warns one East Coast official. Most East Coast residents don't even know the Puerto Rico Trench exists. The message from the scientific community is clear. This isn't a matter of if, but when. And the when could be any time. Because the data shows this situation is getting worse, not better. The Caribbean region doesn't get long breaks between major seismic events. Puerto Rico has been hammered by 13 earthquakes of magnitude 7.0 or larger since 1670. That's one major earthquake roughly every 25 years. But the pattern is more disturbing than simple frequency. Three of those 13 major earthquakes generated destructive tsunamis. The 1787 event, estimated at magnitude 8.0 to 8.2, struck north of Puerto Rico with devastating regional impact. The 1918 magnitude 7.2 quake killed 116 people and caused millions in damage. The 1946 Hispaniola earthquake, magnitude 8.0, generated another regional tsunami. What's escalating isn't just the historical frequency, it's our understanding of what's possible. Each new geological survey reveals evidence of larger prehistoric events. Core samples from Puerto Rico's mangrove ponds contain tsunami deposits from a massive prehistoric wave that struck between 1470 and 1530. The earthquake that caused it would have been magnitude 8.7 or larger, bigger than anything in recorded Caribbean history. The implications are staggering. If the trench produced a magnitude 8.7 earthquake 500 years ago, it can do it again. But now, instead of hitting sparsely populated indigenous settlements, it would strike modern cities, tourism infrastructure, and millions of residents with no cultural memory of such devastation. Modern monitoring technology is also revealing new threats. 
Submarine landslide scars along the trench walls show evidence of massive collapses that could generate tsunamis independently of earthquakes. These underwater avalanches could trigger with no seismic warning whatsoever. The pressure is building. The question isn't whether the trench will produce another major event, it's whether we'll be ready when it does. And history tells us exactly what patterns like this can lead to. October 11, 1918, 10.14 local time. The ground across Puerto Rico began to shake violently, throwing people to the ground and toppling buildings. Within minutes, the ocean along the west coast began to behave strangely, pulling back, exposing the seafloor, then returning as a towering wall of water. The 1918 San Fermin earthquake generated a tsunami that killed at least 116 people and caused $4 million in damage, equivalent to over $80 million today. Survivors described the wave as arriving like a wall with no time to run. Entire coastal communities were swept away in minutes. But 1918 was just a preview. Geological evidence now proves that around 1470 to 1530, a much larger earthquake, possibly magnitude 8.7 or higher, ruptured approximately 400 kilometers of the trench and generated a prehistoric mega tsunami that dwarfs anything in recorded history. And right now, the same warning signs are flashing. The official alert level for the Puerto Rico trench remains at normal monitoring status. But behind that calm facade, the response tells a different story. NOAA operates deep ocean pressure sensors around the clock, specifically positioned to detect waves generated by trench earthquakes. The Caribbean Tsunami Warning Program maintains 24-7 watch operations. Emergency management agencies from Puerto Rico to Maine have quietly updated their evacuation plans to include trench-generated tsunami scenarios. FEMA has developed new inundation maps showing which coastal areas would flood from various magnitude earthquakes. The U.S. Coast Guard has positioned rapid response assets along the eastern seaboard. Most telling of all, the language has changed. Official planning documents now include catastrophic scenario, earthquake magnitudes up to 9.0, a scale that would rival the 2004 Indian Ocean disaster or the 2011 Japan tsunami. One no AA oceanographer puts it simply, our buoys and seismic sensors are critical for early warning. Every minute counts with a tsunami. The contrast is stark. Public awareness remains minimal, while expert concern has never been higher. Warning systems are sophisticated, but they can't overcome physics. Even with perfect detection and communication, Puerto Rico would have 20 minutes at most. The U.S. East Coast would have hours to evacuate millions of people from hundreds of miles of coastline. But the real question everyone is asking is not whether the systems will work. It's what happens when they do. The experts who study the Puerto Rico Trench divide the possible futures into three scenarios, each more sobering than the last. In the best case, the trench continues its current pattern of moderate earthquakes, magnitude six to seven events that cause regional damage, but don't generate basin-wide tsunamis. Life continues. Communities remain vulnerable, but unharmed. In the intermediate scenario, a magnitude 7.5 to 8.0 earthquake ruptures a significant portion of the trench. No AA modeling shows this would generate waves capable of impacting the entire U.S. East Coast. Damage would be substantial but manageable, with wave heights of three to six feet in most locations, enough to cause flooding and infrastructure damage, but not the wholesale destruction of coastal communities. The nightmare scenario involves a magnitude 8.5 to 9.0 earthquake, the kind now being considered in catastrophic planning. A rupture of this scale could displace the seafloor across 400 to 500 kilometers, generating waves 30 to 60 feet high in the near field and 6 to 15 feet along the U.S. coast. The human and economic toll would be unprecedented in Atlantic history. But there's a fourth possibility that keeps tsunami scientists awake at night. A massive submarine landslide triggered by seismic activity or occurring independently. The underwater slopes of the Puerto Rico Trench are loaded with unstable sediment. A collapse involving just a fraction of this material could generate waves larger than any earthquake-produced tsunami. No one can say for certain which path this will take. The geological record suggests intervals of hundreds to thousands of years between the largest events. But it also shows that when the trench releases its built-up energy, 
the results reshape entire coastlines. And that uncertainty is exactly what makes this so dangerous. The Puerto Rico Trench doesn't care about our preparedness timelines or comfort levels. It operates on geological time, building pressure grain by grain, year by year, until the inevitable release. What makes this threat so insidious is that it appears stable right up until the moment it becomes catastrophic. Every day that passes without a major earthquake increases the statistical likelihood that the next one will be significant. The stress accumulating along the fault planes doesn't dissipate, it compounds. The submarine slopes don't become more stable over time. They become more loaded with sediment and more prone to failure. Modern monitoring can tell us when something is happening, but it cannot tell us when something will happen. The same instruments that would detect a magnitude 9.0 earthquake can't predict one. The deep ocean buoys that would track a tsunami's progress across the Atlantic can't prevent it from forming. Meanwhile, coastal development continues. More people move to waterfront communities. More infrastructure is built in potential inundation zones. More economic value is concentrated in areas that could be swept clean by waves traveling faster than helicopters. The equation is simple and terrifying. Growing vulnerability meets unchanging hazard. The Puerto Rico Trench will eventually produce another major tsunami. When it does, it will encounter a Caribbean and U.S. East Coast more densely populated, more economically valuable, and more dependent on vulnerable coastal infrastructure than ever before in human history. As of this moment, seismic stations continue their quiet vigil. Deep ocean sensors maintain their electronic watch, and 8,000 feet beneath the Caribbean Sea, Two continental plates continue their inexorable, deadly dance. The next major Puerto Rico trench earthquake isn't a question of if, it's a question of when. And when that moment comes, 100 million Americans will have hours, not days, to reach safety. Stay informed, stay prepared, because this sleeping giant is still sleeping.